Valdres is a traditional district located in the eastern part of Norway. It is most well known for its mountains, long history and rich culinary culture. Many Norwegians have cabins in Valdres and spend their vacation there, where they do hiking, cycling, skiing, fishing and many other activities. Many tourists just drive through on their way to the fjords. We will show you why you should also stop here. This video has been produced in collaboration with Beitostörlen Resort. Valdres consists of the six municipalities Nord Aurdal, Sør Aurdal, Østre Slidre, Vestre Slidre, Vang, and Etnedal. The southern border is the Lake Sperilen at Nes i Odal. In the west and north, the borders are Gulsville, Filefjell, and Jotunheimen. The Valdres region lies between the valleys of Gudbrandsdalen in the east and Hallingdal in the west. In Valdres you will also find roughly a fourth of Norway's remaining stave churches. Throughout the video we will refer to other videos with more details about a specific location. You will find the link in the boxes above and in the description. The main roads are the E16 and Road 51. Just driving on the main roads, especially E16, will reveal only a small part of Valdres, as it stretches many tens of kilometers from the road in each direction which cannot be seen from it. To really explore it, you will have to leave the road and venture into the wilderness. The word Valdres means either mountainous road or valley of pasture near the forest. When coming from Oslo, you will first reach Nes i Ådal. From there you can reach the side valley of Hedalm. This is a very rural place, and there you will have access to the Vassfare Nature Reserve, which lies half in Hedalm and half in Flå in Hallingdal. You will find the Hedalm Stave Church, with the earliest part dating from the 12th century, but the church got modified quite a lot, especially in the 17th century. It is still in use today. From Hedalm, you use road 225 back to Begnadal to get back to E16. You can also choose to exit the E16 a bit north from Nes i Odal onto a smaller road on the east side of the river Begna called Ausidevein. If you want to explore, then this is a more scenic route, and you can stop by the Piltingsru farm. If you keep following this road, you will end up on the E16 again. The next major center is Bangen, a natural place to stop to shop, eat or rest. From Bangen, there are several roads going up the mountain to reach different side valleys. One of them leads to the stave church of Reinli, which was constructed around 1300. It is not used regularly anymore, but can be visited as a museum during summer. If you continue up the valley, you will pass Stavedalen Ski Center. After the toll road, you will reach the starting point to the giant's kettles at Kvitingen. We have a video about it if you want to hike there. When driving on E16 from Bangen, a new tunnel was opened in 2020, so that E16 now avoids the small road along Bangskleiva. Then you will reach Björgo. Previously, here you would have seen the Valdres railway line to Fagernes, but passenger traffic was stopped at the end of 1988, and the tracks were completely removed in the early 2000s. The remainder of the line can be found in the direction of Dokka, where it is also possible to do drazing tours. Check our video about it. Now continue in the direction of Fagernes. On the way you will pass Aurdal, where you will also find Valdres Golf, which is located next to the lake Dokkafjorden. Check our video about it, if you would like to play there. In Aurdal you will also find Valdres Alpine Center, which is a small alpine ski resort, which also has many cross-country slopes. Fagernes is the regional center in Valdres on the shore of Lake Strandefjorden. Until 1857 there was actually not much there, but then a grocery store opened 
Then a hotel followed. With the arrival of the railroad in 1906, it became even more important, as more people moved in and tourists came. Today, 1,800 people live in Fagernes. Fagernes even used to have an international airport, but it was closed for passenger traffic in 2018 when the last charter flights left. It is still open for small planes. You might be able to spot hydroplanes on the lake from time to time. In Fagernes, you will find many shops and restaurants. The Fagernes Park is a popular recreation area. Just outside the center and next to Fagernes Camping, you will find the Valdres Folk Museum. This is an outdoor museum with many ancient buildings. Check our video about it for more details. What Fagernes is actually most known for is the Rakfisk Festival. Rakfisk is a local food speciality. Trout is fermented in salted water for at least 6 and up to 18 months. Every first weekend in November, around 25,000 people come to Fagernes to try the new Rakfisk from the 8 different makers. Over the years it became a huge local food specialities festival, where people from the whole country present their products. It is also a huge party place with many concerts and other festivities. Hotels in a 100 km radius are booked out for the event. And there are Rakfisk parties everywhere. Rakfisk is traditionally eaten in a lefse, a soft flatbread, together with onions, dill and sour cream. With it, Norwegians usually drink aquawit. From here, Valdres will split into two valleys. The western to Vang and Filifjelle, and the eastern to Beitostølen and Jotunheimen. When driving on the eastern valley, you will slowly climb up the mountain. The river in the valley will pass several lakes, and unlike in other countries, the same river might change its name each time it passes through a lake in Norway. This river has six or seven names through the valley. One of the centers of the valley is Hegenes. There you will find the stave church of Hegge, which dates back to the early 11th century. It is still in use to this day. From the church, you will have a nice view on the lake Heggefjorden. From there, the lake looks a bit like Norway, if the north is on the right and the south on the left. From Hegnes, you can also get to the Langsua National Park and the lonely mountain Skage. Check our video about it. The road to Skage is exactly the kind of road we explained earlier, that there is much more to see from Valdres when you drive off the main roads. After Hegenes, you will reach Beitostølen, which is the largest ski resort in Valdres and one of Norway's top all-year holiday destinations. Many Norwegians have cabins there, and the cross-country World Cup season opening is in Beitostølen, as there is snow early in the season. Beitostølen has around 6 to 7 winter months each year. You have to really like it when you live here. From here you can reach all the hiking destinations in the Jotunheimen National Park, like Bessegen. We have many videos about this region, so check our playlist. If you want to visit the Western Valley, you can drive back to Fagernes or drive over the Slettefjell mountain, which is quite an adventure. From Beitostølen, drive towards the Reudalen ski center. The road to Slettefjell is marked all the way. At some point, you will reach a toll road where you will have to pay a small fee. It's an automatic toll where you have to pay on a website after passing. Then continue. At some point, we saw a whole reindeer herd crossing right in front of the car. On the top, you will have an impressive view over Jotunheimen, Beitostølen, Bitihorn, and Skage. 
driving down on the other side, you will arrive next to Lake Vangsmyosa. There is a road on both shores. On the southern shore is E16, and the one on the northern side is smaller and more narrow, but also more interesting. A secret destination nearby is Sparstadstølen in Sandalm. At the western end of the lake there is Øye, where you will find another stave church. This one has an interesting history. Being built right next to the lake in the 14th century, it started to rot and was demolished in 1727. Parts of it were stored under the floor of the new church, where they were found by a carpenter in 1935. The church was rebuilt in the 1950s and reopened in 1965. We also tried exactly what we are telling you since beginning here. Just drive up the mountains on some road and see where it leads. We ended in a valley called the Rødalm. We actually found a pilgrim path there and some cows with big horns which didn't seem to like us too much. In Vang, next to the lake, you will find the Vangstein. This is a two meter high stone covered with runes from the Viking Age. In Vang, there is no stave church anymore. When the new church was built, the old one was dismantled and sold. It was first meant to go to Oslo, but ended up in Germany. It finally ended in Krumhybel in Silesia, which today is called Karpacz and lays in Poland, next to the German border. Most stave churches lay in this area, so we continue with the one in Høre. It is thought to be built in the 11th century. It was heavily changed in the 19th. During renovation and archaeological searches, coins from the 1040s were found under the church. The next one is Lumenstavkirke, which also dates back from the 12th century, with modification in the 18th century. Most of the churches can only be visited on certain days during summer season and are closed for the rest of the year. Check Visit Valdres website for opening hours if you want to see more than just the exterior. One last church is Slidredomen, which is in contrast to the other ones, a stone church in Romanesque style. One more historical site nearby is the Einang stone. This is another stone with runes, but it is dated from the 4th century. It lays on a grave mound, and it is assumed that it is some sort of tombstone. So here we end our overview of Valdres. As you see, there is a lot to see, and we just showed you the places we stopped, but there are many more. So next time you drive through the region, think about stopping and exploring the beautiful and interesting region. Check Visit Valdres website for more information about other sites. If you watched this video to this point, then consider subscribing to this channel and give it a like. Check our Facebook and Instagram for bonus content.